All right, let's uh, let's open up the stack of sources we've got. We're diving into something pretty fascinating today, I think. It's this question of why we humans seem to automatically assign gender to robots, you know, these non-biological creations. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. So the mission for this deep dive, basically cut laugh. through these articles, these notes, and um, really uncover the key insights, figure out what this curious tendency actually tells us about ourselves. It really is remarkable, isn't it? I mean, we built something totally from scratch, no it's biology involved. And almost the first thing we do, we try and fit it into these, well, very old social boxes, yeah. gender boxes. It's like we can't quite wrap our heads around a new thing without putting it on that familiar male-female spectrum. Exactly. And these sources, they really get into the why. Is it maybe about making something unfamiliar feel a bit less strange? Yeah, more relatable, perhaps? Could be. One thing that really jumped out from that Penn State study mentioned here was just how much the perceived gender of a robot can actually sway things, like uh, how persuasive it is. Oh, right, that study, yes. It showed that a robot that people saw as more masculine, it could actually be more persuasive. Though, interestingly, it also notes that adding sort of cute features, you know, big eyes, stuff like that, that seemed to soften the gender effect on persuasion a bit. So it's not just us casually slapping labels on things. Our own biases, our ingrained stuff, it seems to kick right in. And it changes how we actually interact with these machines. It really mirrors our own social dynamics, doesn't it? Uh-huh. It's like a feedback loop, as some of these notes describe it. Our human biases shape how we design robots, how we see them. And then the robots, or at least our idea of them, can end up just reinforcing those same biases right back at us. Which, yeah, brings up that big question. Why default to just two options, the binary? If you're literally building something new, why stick to just male or female perceptions? Well, thankfully, that's something designers are pushing back on now. There's a definite movement. Absolutely. You see it right here with projects like the Sam Voice. That was uh, Accenture and Sarah Proc, I think. Yes, that's one. They specifically worked with non-binary people to engineer a voice intended to be neutral pitch, intonation, the works. Mm, a really conscious effort to create something without those built-in gender cues from the get-go. And then there's something like Amika, that robot from Engineered Arts. Ah, Amika. Watching yeah. videos of Amika is something else. It really is. You've got this incredibly human-like face, right? It can show such subtle emotions, apparently dozens of motors just in the head. But the body itself is quite ambiguous, often gray, not really conforming to typical gendered shapes. And it uses machine perception. It watches you, sees your expressions, reacts. Yeah. When it, say, makes eye contact and kind of mirrors your smile, we know it's algorithms crunching data, but the feeling you get... It feels really human. It does. Makes you wonder, are you connecting with some early form of AI presence? Or is it just a super sophisticated mirror? reflecting our own stuff back at us. So, okay, let's pull back a bit. What's the core paradox emerging from these sources? On one hand, studies like that Penn State one clearly show we project our gender biases onto robots. Yeah. And that projection matters. It affects persuasion, interaction, real yeah. effects. Right. Clear evidence. But at the very same time, you've got designers actively trying to break that pattern. Yeah. Creating non-binary options like the Sam voice, specifically to avoid triggering those biases. And robots like Amika, ambiguous form, but uncannily human face, making us really question what we're even seeing. It just hammers home that building robots isn't only about engineering, is it? It's tangled up completely with our own social psychology or history. Yeah. So as these machines get smarter, hmm. more like us, hmm. it's the inevitable outcome that we just, you know, build our oldest biases right into them, hardwire them. Or... Is there maybe another path? Could these non-binary designs, these ambiguous forms, actually push us? Push us to think beyond the easy categories we default to? It really forces you to think, doesn't it? What parts of being human are we choosing to copy? Which parts are we maybe simplifying or hopefully 
moving past as we create these artificial partners. Yeah, it makes you consider when you look into the increasingly lifelike eyes of future robots, what will you see looking back? cutting edge tech or mainly a reflection of ourselves our complex often contradictory history with identity and gender 